We're now going to look at different data collection methods and there are eight in total you need to know about for the exam. For each you need to consider the advantages and disadvantages and I can certainly imagine a potential exam question being you get given a scenario and would have to explain which method would be most appropriate for that scenario. So have that in the back of your mind as we go through. Be constantly thinking what's good, what's bad, what could some limitations be. So just quickly taking a step back and thinking about collecting data as a, a an idea. All right, so businesses do this all the time for analyzing it to try and find out which ways they can improve and so on. We'll talk about how it can be used in different sectors in future videos. But how we are collecting it will depend on our purpose. Where are we getting the data from? Can we get it ourselves? Do we have to get it from someone else? And how are we going to store it? And in particular, how we're going to store it is dependent on data types, right? So as we go through, we'll also need to think about the different data types involved. What are what kinds of data are we going to be collecting? Because that will depend on our method and how we intend to use it. So before we start, we need to introduce two key terms. So first one, primary research. When you are conducting primary research, you are collecting the data yourself. It's primary because you are doing it yourself. So you are actually going out there, giving surveys out. You're going to put a sensor and collect data that way. In contrast, secondary research is where we have data, we, we're using data which already exists. So we are collecting it, but someone else had collected it already for us. We're just getting it from them, right? So someone else did it, the data which you are using already exists. So it's not fresh, right? Primary research is fresh data you're doing, you're collecting just yourself. Secondary is used by someone else. We'll evaluate this a little bit later. But let's look at our first method, which is collecting data via questionnaires slash surveys. So a questionnaire is a set of questions, which is a big surprise, which are given to people to receive information from them. So we're collecting data slash information via a set of questions and the, the person will answer the questions and we use that information to analyze it or to receive some opinions maybe. So when I think of question, I think of people who stop you in the street and get you to try and fill in a form. I always try and walk past as quickly as possible. But I've put questionnaire slash survey because survey as a word is often used interchangeably with questionnaire. Although there is a slight difference, I wouldn't worry too much about the difference because a questionnaire is just for questions. So here for this swimming club, we've got some questions, some limited choice, some open-ended. But the survey will include the entire process. So the actual collection, maybe giving out this survey outside the swimming club and also analysing it. So analysing it, looking at the answers, trying to find any trends maybe. So a survey is the entire process, collecting data, analysing it, whereas a questionnaire is just for questions on paper or online. Speaking of which, we're doing an IT course, so we can't not talk about the fact that many surveys and questionnaires nowadays are hosted online. So a web-based survey is based on a website, right? So we need the internet to access it. That's what makes it online. And this can be good because we can send questionnaires via email. We'll look at email uh, next as a, as a method. And what's really useful here, this is from Microsoft Forms, and you can see the responses live. So if you send out a, a questionnaire, you can look online and see the responses as they come in, which is really nice because you can immediately see what people are thinking and it will start to analyze it for you. So often, Microsoft Forms, Google Forms, will show you little graphs and lists of your responses, which is really nice because that's work which you might have to do by hand if you were doing it offline. So we have online surveys like Microsoft Forms, but other surveys are offline and are said to be hard copy. So a hard copy is meaning a physical survey, a physical questionnaire, I should say, on paper, right? So a hard copy is printed out or written out and is filled out on paper. And obviously if you're doing it on paper, the answers are not gonna be sent automatically. You'd have to collect all the papers in and analyze it yourself, which takes more time. But thinking about evaluation, not everyone has access to the internet. Some people might need to have a hard copy questionnaire to actually be able to give their opinion. Speaking of which, let's evaluate them. So what's good about questionnaires and or surveys is, well, if they are based online, it's very easy to distribute from to many people at the same time. You know, if you send off an email, you can send an email to thousands and thousands of people if you so wish. Hard copy, 
is a bit hard, ironically. It's, it's harder, right, to send it to many people. You'd have to sit and post them or hand them out in person. Not as easy, but online makes it very easy. Also, if you are clever with how you are framing your questions, so that the answers are going to be either limited choice, so thinking, you know, radio, buttons, um, drop down menu, tick lists, or Boolean, Boolean being true or false answers, it's very easy to make comparisons between them. So if I go back to this picture here, the first question, what is your name, is an open-ended question. We're getting loads of different responses, or two in this case, but we can get any name in this field. But here we've got a limited choice question, what level of sessions do you typically enjoy? We've only got a few options here, novice to expert. We can easily compare it straight away. In fact, it's doing it for us on a little pie chart. Whereas if we had an open-ended question, it's harder to compare it we'd have to do some analysis manually. And also another good thing is they are generally cheaper than alternative methods we'll look at like interviews or consumer panels because you just have to write the questions and then distribute it. There's not a ton of your time involved while it's getting filled out. What is maybe not so good potentially is unless it is hard copy and you're having it offline, you need to have an internet connection to access for web-based surveys. Not everyone does, right? Not everyone has got a computer. Not everyone is able to use the internet. And the flip side of my point here about it's good to have limited choice and Boolean answers. If we have text answers, maybe we need to have a text answer if it's quite opinion based. It can be very time consuming to read every single response to pick out the key bits. And the nature of a questionnaire is often that you are filling it in yourself privately. No one is stood over your shoulder watching you, hopefully. And that means you may be more likely to be slightly dishonest or maybe you might not put much effort into answering a questionnaire because you're not doing it face to face. If it was an interview or a panel, which we'll both look at, you might be more likely to be honest because you are sat opposite a natural human. If you're filling it in online, there's not really that human connection and so you may rush it, you may not really care, you may even lie. So that could be a disadvantage. Clearly, if people are lying on your questionnaire, the data you're going to be collecting is not going to be as useful as if they were being honest.